Hey guys, Garrett here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to answer the question of how much power does an energy efficient house actually use and how does it compare to the national averages over the entire United States. When I built my house, I did three different things that set it apart from the vast majority of the homes that are around it. I built it out of ICF construction, that's insulated concrete forms. So the walls are actually uh, filled with concrete with two and a half inches of foam on each side. The second thing that I did was put one inch of rigid foam insulation underneath my slab within my basement. So the ICF actually goes from the foundation, the footing, everything down in the basement all the way up to the roof and then that uh, insulation butts right up against it so it creates a nice thermal break. And then the third thing I did was put geothermal heating and cooling in or a ground source heat pump. If you don't know what that is, check out my library of videos. I have a whole bunch of them that cover the geothermal heating and cooling. So those are the three different things that I did that's different than the vast majority of people. Majority of people just build a stick framed home which is just two by four with our 13 insulation in between and as we all know it's just not a very efficient way to go if you look at this pie chart you'll notice that 46 percent of all the energy that gets used within a home is for hvac another 14 percent goes towards water heating well those three improvements that i made within my house mainly impact that hvac component of it that 46 percent but that geothermal system also impacts the water heating it gives me some free hot water so it is within these areas that i'm able to see a decrease in the amount of power that i use my property consists of a 6,000 square foot house so that's 3,000 square feet on the main level and another 3,000 down in the basement so it's a pretty good size house but it also has a 3100 square foot shop that is detached from it all of the power of both of those go through one meter so when I look at my annual usage my annual usage is actually 14,392 kilowatt hours of electricity that I use but part of that is used for that shop. And while I don't use that shop every single day, I do use it for automotive purposes. You know, I've got things in here, lifts and air compressors, and I actually have mini split uh, heat pumps in there. So whenever I do work in here, a lot of times I turn those on, they do use some electricity. Even this room that I am in is built within this shop. So right now I am using electricity in that shop. So I'm gonna estimate that uh, 7% of the total electricity that I've used is used by this shop. So that comes out to just a little over 1000 kilowatt hours. So if you subtract that out, you get 13,385 kilowatt hours, at least that's my estimation of what gets used by my house. Here's a graph of my energy usage throughout the year, as well as the raw numbers that were plugged into that, if you're interested in that. As you can see on this graph, there are definitely four distinct seasons. I live in the middle of Kansas, and we have all four seasons, and they are drastically different from each other. And you can see that within my energy usage. If you look on the left side of that graph, right where February was, it was an incredible cold month. That's when the deep freeze hit the entire United States. And in my area, it got all the way down to negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit. It was cold for a considerable period of time, and I definitely used more energy than I normally would have. But it wasn't that much more energy. In essence, it was roughly 400 kilowatt hours extra for that week long of a deep freeze. So it really wasn't too bad. It didn't hit my house nearly as hard as it would have hit everybody else's house. My geothermal system had no problem keeping me warm and that ICF envelope that surrounded me. Uh, you know, we just didn't even know what the temperature was outside unless we actually went outside. So it wasn't that big of a deal. So how does my house compare to the national averages throughout the entire United States? So the average size house in 2020 within the United States was 2,261 square feet, just if you were ever wondering. But if you break it down, okay, a 2,000 square foot house uses 11,604 kilowatt hours annually. A 2,500 square foot house, 12,271 kilowatt kilowatt hours. A 3,000 square foot house, 14,210 kilowatt hours. And all of this information came from the Energy Information Administration and it's based on 2015 data. They don't have anything that's more recent than that. So that's all I can go by. They also don't have any information for homes bigger than that. 
So how do I know how I compare to all of this? Well, if you look at that right-hand category, the annual usage per square foot. So it's just the annual kilowatt hour usage divided by the square feet of the home. So for the smaller home, the 2,000 square foot home, it's 5.8. The 2,500 square foot home, 4.91, and the 3,000 square foot home, 4.74 kilowatt hours per square foot. So you'll notice that these keep going down as the house size gets bigger. And the main reason for that is the number of people within those houses are generally going to be the same. A lot of people have big houses like me, but there's only four people in it. Well, it could be the same thing that's in that 2,000 square foot house. So you have to remember with that pie chart, the HVAC needs of that uh, house are actually only 46%. So the size of that house impacts that 46%, not necessarily the usage per person. So let's say there's four people within a home and their base usage, them themselves, that's electronics, lighting, all of that other stuff is 150 kilowatt hours per month per person. So if it's a family of four, that's 600 kilowatt hours. Well, that's not really going to change regardless of the size of the house that you're in because that's based on uh, your individual usage, your computers, your TVs, your cooking, your fridge. So generally speaking, the increase in power usage of a bigger house is because of the HVAC. It's not because anyone is using more electricity themselves. So as a house gets bigger, the usage per square foot actually goes down. So just kind of giving it a best guess for myself. I'm going to say that my 6,000 square foot house has a four kilowatt hour per square foot usage. It's my best guess. So that would mean that I would generally use for this size house 24,000 kilowatt hours per year. But as we could see, I use 14,392 kilowatt hours with 1,000 kilowatt hours of those going to the shop. So you minus that out, it's 13,385 kilowatt hours versus what would have been 24,000 kilowatt hours. That represents a savings of 45% or 10,615 kilowatt hours saved by doing the construction that I did. So by employing these better methods of building, I was able Able to get a house that uses the same amount or actually a little bit less electricity than a house half its size. And that's something that just keeps on paying you all year long. In the next video, I'm going to break down the actual numbers. Is it actually worth it when you get down to the nuts and bolts of, of everything, all of the different costs associated with putting in those different systems that I did? How long does it take to uh, pay itself back? And, and really, is it worth it? We'll get into that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you next time.